also known as the intentional mom and here i am with day two of helping moms kind of survive having kids home from school uh, because if you are watching this video now as i am filming it our country has kind of been put on uh lockdown quarantine so a lot of moms are at home with kids uh, when they're used to kids being at school and as a homeschool mom this is something i do know a lot about uh, with nine kids at home pretty much all the time. Uh, so yesterday we did uh, step one in the video and uh, in that I shared uh, the importance of having a daily schedule, creating a daily schedule. I, you know, kind of uh, illustrated how kids have schedules in school, schools have schedules, right? And that's because they work for a good reason. Having that structure, having all of that is helpful. It's helpful for the kids, it's helpful for us as moms. And so I shared uh, I shared a simple basic schedule. If you didn't get one of these, um, you can download them in the links from yesterday's video. You can, down, you can um, go download a free copy of this. And in the comments from the video I did yesterday on Facebook, you'll find where I took a picture of this so that you can see, I walked you through the things in here, but you can actually see a picture of it in the comments from yesterday's uh, video right here on Facebook. So that's something that you could do if you did not do that. One of the things I talked about in that schedule is what we're gonna talk about today, which is what I called yesterday individual time. And this is a way that we as moms can still um, manage to find a few moments of alone time for ourselves. And actually these are good for our kids too. And I'm gonna share more with you of why it matters, but also how to make it happen. Uh, with nine people, well, 11 total people in our house, in our family, um, it's amazing how quickly you can all get on top of each other and, and not have any clear definition of personal space. And while that's okay most of the time, I think it's helpful to kind of put up some boundaries and have a little bit of personal space at a couple of times throughout the day. And I know as a mom, this is something that I find super helpful. I do need just a few minutes to catch my breath uh, throughout the day, especially the more crazy the day, the more I feel like I need that. And it really is possible for you to get a few moments by yourself, even with kids at home. And so that's what we're gonna talk about, okay? So <clears throat> why does this matter? Why is it helpful? It's helpful because, as I mentioned, it help, it, it's making you, it's giving you the time you need to kind of recharge, right? Daily life, especially if you're all of a sudden transitioning to having your kids home all the time, when you're used to kind of having your time a little bit more to yourself, daily life is probably a little bit draining. It can get very draining without a few moments to just kind of recharge. And so as a busy mom, we're always there for our kids, right? A lot of days I find that my life is kind of just going from one interruption to the next, to the next, to the next. I might have little pockets in there where I'm doing some things that I actually have planned, right? And that's where the schedule comes in. Um, but, you know, a lot of anything that I'm doing is kind of always open to be interrupted because I'm here, they're here. And so that I think is part of what makes being home with your kids all day very tiring. It's just because you're constantly being diverted. And so just, you know, kind of the drain that that takes out of you is something that we need to take a few minutes to refuel and actually your kids need that too. So basically this time is gonna give you the ability to recharge and it's so important that we have a few minutes to be able to do that. And as I mentioned, it's also good for your kids. And this is especially true, you know, our kids need time to recharge true, too. We just don't think about it, but they really do. And I find this is especially true with kids of today because especially as your kids get a little bit older, not so much with maybe toddlers and, you know, super young elementary, but as soon as kids get access to things like email or a phone where they might be getting texts or messages, they are constantly, if your kids are any like anything like mine, constantly getting a you know a barrage of texts and messages, and they're constantly being interrupted too. This is something I try to get my teens, especially who seem to have like a cell phone as an appendage, right? And every time they get a text, they you know look at their phone and see who it's from. And I keep trying to get them to understand that's taking a toll on you. The fact that you are kind of always on call in order to be able to be interrupted. You're not interrupted all the time, but you literally, t in my eyes, I see it as when we have these things available to us, we are constantly on call to be interrupted. And that is draining, it really is. And so 
if you have kids who have access to these kinds of things, things like emails and texts and messaging, this this refuel time is gonna help them too. And it, it's it's something that they probably don't even realize they need, but as parents, it's a really good idea for us to teach our kids how to have some healthy boundaries, you know, in, in uh, value being unplugged for certain periods of time. And this is basically what this is. This is kind of a independent time is kind of an unplug from kind of other people, but also just kind of stepping back from what your day would normally have, right? So it's good for moms, it's good for kids. So now let's talk about how to do it, okay? I have a series of steps to follow and I wanted to make this super easy and super easy for you to follow. And so I have this really broken down to how to do this, okay? So the first thing I would recommend, and again, in the schedule yesterday, if you look, the schedule that I gave you, I have individual time listed from three until 4.45. So that's kind of an extended time. Um, I think of that as uh, nap time for little kids or quiet time for older kids, right? Um, this is just, it's just helpful for everybody to have a little break. So, but it's probably gonna be kind of, um, it might be, you might think that that's kind of a lot of time, especially if you're trying to keep kind of the interaction and kind of keep people completely independent. Um, I find, you know, my kids really do do this. Even my little kids, my littlest kids are in naps, still in naps at this time. So they're kind of out of the equation, but even my five-year-old is able to um, spend, and actually probably even when he was four and maybe even three, he was able to have, you know, he would go for naps, but he wouldn't necessarily sleep. All my kids kind of followed the same pattern. My kids keep taking naps beyond like age three and beyond the point where they would normally stop sleeping and they just have that alone separate time. And they really appreciate it because they get to do whatever it is they're doing reading books, doing a puzzle, working on a crafty type thing, playing with dominoes, even playing with like matchbox cars or something like that, and they don't have to share. They get to play the way they want without worrying about anybody else or sharing with anybody else, and it and it really is time that they value. So, but if, if an hour and 15 minutes sounds like a lot, and it might be, especially if you're trying to get toddlers to do this, um, so maybe start with 15 or 20 minutes. So step one is to determine the amount of time you wanna start instituting with individual time. And if you don't have toddlers, if you really only have slightly older kids, you might find, you know, schedule it for an hour or schedule it for the hour and 15 minutes that I suggested in the schedule yesterday. Um, you know, my kids would love to sit and read a book for an hour and 15 minutes, you know? So, I mean, it, it, it's not gonna be hard probably for you to come up with a time that's the right fit for you. But if it sounds like a lot and you know it would be a huge ask of your kids, especially if they're little, then start with 15 or 20 minutes, okay? So that's step number one is to determine the amount of time. Step number two is to kind of determine the logistics. Where is everybody, everybody gonna go for this alone time? So if you only have a few people in your house, they can probably each go to their own separate space, maybe their own separate room. We don't have that, right? Because we have 11 people here and we have all of our girls share a big, huge uh, suite and all of our boys share a big, huge suite. So they don't have really their own space. So we have to divide, we have to get a little bit more creative in how we give each person their individual space. You might find this too, especially because if you have toddlers and you're doing this with young kids, you still need them to be within view of you. So then we do it with blankets, right? And we actually call this blanket training. And we start this with our kids as young as nine months. They can sit in their own, they can be trained and learn to sit in their own little space on their own little blanket with their own little toys. And again, they really don't see this as a bad thing or that the blanket is limiting them, especially if you're only talking about 15 or 20 minutes. It really can be spun and presented in such a way that you know you don't have to share for for 15 or 20 minutes you know you get to play the way you want with the things that you want you know and it, and it really is something that i think kids largely feel is a positive so determine how you're going to have people divided up that's step number two and you might have to get a little bit creative but with little kids i love blanket training this has i had four i had three kids in four years and i needed for my kids to have this quiet space in a space that was all their own so that I could focus on another kid. That's how I used it when way back in the day when I had my older kids who were littler and I had a lot of them at one time and no big people to help me. Now I have big people with my little people, so it helps. Um, but it was very effective for that. So number step number two is to gather this, to um, determine the place that is appropriate. 
Step number three is to gather some supplies, right? We don't wanna just say, hey, we're gonna sit down and have our individual time, so sit down there and don't talk to anybody else, right? I mean, that's probably not gonna work. And I would suggest if you have kids that have access to technology, that this could be a good opportunity and a good time to kind of have it be tech free. That's up to you whether you see that as a need or not, but it is helpful if, like I said, your kids who have access to being messaged and texted and all that stuff, if this is actually true independence time for them, which means also they're not gonna be interrupted by other people. So gather some supplies though get some things for your kids to do your little kids especially um you know your older kids can probably think about what they might like to do like here you know i just like this book but but if you're having individual time start at like two don't expect that at two everybody's just ready to go right you want to gather your supplies ahead of time think about what your kids of whatever age they are are going to need to kind of keep themselves entertained what would they appreciate doing for the for the amount of time that you've decided to implement this okay so gather your supplies i also find that with young kids you might i found it helpful when i especially at first when i instituted this is that i got a few new little things for them at you know the dollar spot at target or at a dollar store or whatever just some new things to kind of keep them entertained things they hadn't seen before and we and i had baskets for each kid's stuff and we called it their special basket and those things went into that special basket and those were their things and we'd switch them out it wasn't always the same thing sometimes we'd be on a week rotation where we'd every sunday night swap out those things in there again look if they're bored right if they're bored with what they have it's not probably going to entertain them so you need to keep it interesting you need to get you need to keep independent time so that you can have these moments too you need to um you know just kind of be aware of when maybe it's not going as smoothly as you're used to it going and that could be because whatever it is you have for them to do just isn't entertaining them anymore but come up with some supplies and gather them together so that when you have independent time it's all ready to go you're not left scrambling at that point okay and then step number four is to explain what's happening to your kids. Be clear in what's going on and be clear in what your expectations are. And of course, make it as exciting as possible. You know, especially if you really want this to be a tech free time for maybe some of your older kids, you know, you want them to put their cell phone in the kitchen, you know, and turn off the sounds and all that stuff. You know, you really can present it as a good thing and just to try it. I find this independent time can really just kind of make you feel like it's a little bit of a breath of fresh air. And like I said, your kids might not even realize that they would benefit from it. So at first you might have to just try to kind of plead with them to just kind of trust me, let's try it. Let's at least try it. Let's try it for a week and we'll see what we think at the end of the week and we'll just reevaluate then. Um, but explain exactly what's gonna be happening and what the expectations are, okay? I expect you to, you know, stay here in your room, you know, until the time is up and we'll get to that in a minute. But, you know, and I expect that, you know, unless there's some sort of emergency, you're not gonna, you know, bother me, you're not gonna bother your siblings, you're not gonna complain about anything, you're not gonna fight with whatever somebody else might have that you want. Like, this is what we're doing during this time. Be clear in your expectations and make it exciting, okay? And then, um, especially if you have these little kids on these blankets, it's amazing what they can understand, right? With true blanket training, when we had our kids sitting on their blanket, that was maybe, oh, I would say it was maybe two by four. They each had these little individual blankets. Um, when you're first teaching your little toddlers, when they start to kind of crawl off or whatever, you just kind of, you know, put them, put them back on it and put their toys there and um, you know it just kind of re-engages them and, and they do learn it's amazing how quickly they learn that oh when my blanket is out I'm supposed to sit on it and I'm supposed to play with these toys it's amazing what they can what they can comprehend but step four is to explain to your kids of all ages and the ones who can obviously deal with the explaining and understand the explaining explain to them what's going on including what your expectations are okay and be clear on we're going to do this for 20 minutes we're going to do it from two o'clock to 2 20 and and that's all and that's that's all i'm asking of you and and like i said we're just going to try it because i think it would work really good it helps diminish sibling um fighting i find that when we skip over this or when we have a day that's really uh out of whack and we aren't able to kind of have this individual time there's just a lot more c conflict and um yeah, just conflict between my kids. It's it's real apparent to me. Once you get to the point and you're 
you start to crave this time, right? And I think we as moms know this. I think we would say we crave this time to ourselves, right? We, we crave just having a few moments of peace, right? But it's amazing, your kids actually come to crave that too. And so even though they might not even realize it, even though they might not even think that they miss it, you'll see it in their actions. And it's always real easy for me to tell times where it's been kind of skipped over. Like, like this morning, my husband and I were gone all morning. We had um, eye appointments for both of us. And so the morning was all out of whack. Nothing that normally happens happens. And so we're kind of reeling and trying to backpedal. And so as a result, you know, when when we're missing the normal routines for the full whole first half of the day, they're just not going to it's not going to look the same as a normal day in the back half either. And so it's nice when you get used to this independent time, you'll find that I think your kids, if you've got more than one kid at home, you'll find that it helps them get along better. We all crave, I feel as humans, a little bit of space to ourselves and a little bit of space to free think, a little bit of space to not have to share, to not have to think of others, right? It's just, it's so refreshing. Um, but explain what's going on. And then once you get to this point and you're ready to start, what I find helpful is to play quiet music in the background. Uh, it signals the start and end time. So as long as the music is playing, we're gonna, that, that's when you know. And when you hear the music turn off, then you know that we're done and you can get your stuff and you know put it back away and we're we're ready to move on then we'll move on to xyz or whatever um but the music also i find just like calm classical music or sometimes like you know uh like waterfall sounds or just just something that you would find peaceful and relaxing whatever that might be or what it's amazing how that going in the background just kind of encourages relaxation and just kind of a toning it down without you having to actually kind of implement it. The music kind of does it for you. So my suggestion is during this time that you play some sort of quiet music and it just kind of brings an overall sense of peace and calm. Plus you can also use it for the beginning and ending time. When my older kids were little too, for our school time, because we homeschool, I used to have a certain song that I played at the beginning of homeschool, the homeschool day every day. And that's when my kids knew, get your books, get your stuff, come over here. It's amazing how music can just kind of be a fun little signal. Um, that's better than you, you know, calling everybody by name. Come on, come on, it's two o'clock, you know. It's just, it's just nice. So, um, but I think the quiet music, music going on in the background is super nice too, okay? And then when your time is up, this is kind of step, I think we're on step six or seven, um, but when the time is up, the music turns off and these things get picked up and put away. The blankets get folded up and put away. If you have toddlers, the things go back into the basket. If you've got the little kids and the toys and the other kids, their stuff all gets picked up and put away. And ideally, these are gonna be things that for the moment are being temporarily used only for for this time again you're trying to keep your kids engaged in whatever it is you have them doing during this time and so you don't want them doing the same things throughout the day right they actually look forward to this time when they really only have access to something that hopefully you can come up with something that's really cool that they really enjoy doing so they like you know my kids would really look forward to this like can i get my basket down now can i get my basket down now you know so um so the same thing is kind of true but when that time is up then everything gets packed up and put away and then ideally not touched again until you get to the next individual quiet time and whatever i would suggest the same thing for you too that you not be available for you know texts and emails and all of that stuff during this time and that you actually know how you want to use your time and it doesn't necessarily have to be the same from every you know every day from one day to the next i know that i find certain things help me refuel and recharge depending on what sort of day i've had so sometimes i might enjoy reading whereas more sometimes i might enjoy listening to something um sometimes i might enjoy uh I don't even know what else if I had I've, I've always wanted to get into adult coloring I think that would be so fun so so just, just different things might speak to you on different days but but again no before that two o'clock time frame or whatever it might be don't get to two o'clock and say now what is it I want to do today right just like you're putting some you know forethought into it for your kids do the same thing for you what is it you would like to do during your individual time on any given day and then um and then make sure you have that ready okay so the last thing I wanted to mention is that this technique I find can be used up to a couple of times a day. You can actually schedule independent time a couple of times in your day, especially if you're keeping that time short. But also, this is a very effective thing, and this is kind of the benefit to teaching your kids how to do this as a more scheduled thing, because there are times where I notice just a lot of fighting. My kids, 
you know, for us, we live in Michigan, and so we're trapped in the house pretty much from October through much of March and a lot of times even April. That's a long time. I mean, my kids go out and do stuff, right, too, but for the most part, we're in the same four walls a lot of the time, and you're probably finding the same thing right now, too. Um, and so it's just sometimes, you know, people get on each other's nerves. They just do. Even, you know, it's not rainbows and sunshine for any family, right? So a lot of times it's really nice to be able to respond when you see that there's, and for me too, a lot of times if the noise level is really high, if it's just one of those days where the noise level, just you can't even really figure out why it is. Everything seems loud. Your kids are loud. There's just more loud playing. There's more loud toys. There's just noise. So sometimes it's nice to be able to pull this technique out on the fly when you know you just need to tone it down. And it's amazing, this really does work really well to tone things down. And so when you need it, when this is already a practiced and learned habit in something that you've established, and especially if you have it as part of every day, and you need to throw an extra one in there again, because your kids ideally are going to enjoy this time and, and at least not mind this time, it's not going to be something that typically you're going to get a bunch of resistance on when you say, hey, you know what, we're going to do a 20 minute individual time right now. I think it would just really help us just to all be able to catch our breath a little bit. It's been kind of a crazy morning. So in 10 minutes, we're going to have a, we're, you know, we're going to have a 20 minute individual time. And it's amazing what that can do for everybody's peace of mind. When you start doing this, even after just one time, it's amazing how you'll likely find that everybody actually just feels refreshed at the end. Even though they might not be able to actually verbalize that or put that sort of name on it, it just kind of renews everybody a little bit. You get a little bit of a you know boost in patience, you get a little bit of a boost in tolerance, all of us, moms and kids alike. And so, um, so it's a really effective technique to learn and implement in a, into a daily schedule, especially because you know that at two o'clock or 3.30 or whatever it might be, you're gonna have that little time of respite, right? You know it's coming. So it's like, oh, can two o'clock just come already, right? I mean, there are days, but when you're stuck at home with kids, especially unexpectedly and for long periods of time, several days, several weeks, right? It's really helpful to know that you're gonna be able to catch your breath every day at two or whatever it might be when you have it scheduled in. So step two in how to kind of deal with your kids being at home is Make sure you guys each get some individual time. Follow these steps, they're not hard. And it's amazing how even if you think, boy, I don't even know if that's worth it. I, I would challenge you to try it for at least a week and just kind of keep your finger on just kind of like the pulse of your home and just see, see if you don't see some positive things come out of it. I really feel that as a mom, you're gonna you're gonna feel it but i think you will also see it reflected in your kids and it might take them a long little longer to actually be able to admit it or verbalize it but i think that will probably come in time too it's just it's a useful time to everybody and it really helps keep your sanity okay so tomorrow we're going to talk about something that is um, kind of the opposite and it's something that i find effective um to have scheduled in every day too, and that is a family project. And I'm not necessarily talking about doing a craft together, right? That's not really what I'm talking about. So, um, but it's something that is super uh, fun, useful, and really I think uh, building too. It kind of it kind of builds your family up to do this project as what I'm gonna tell you together. It's not really a project, right? I'm not gonna tell you to go out and build something, right? It's not like a Boy Scout thing. But um, I'll be excited to tell you about that tomorrow, okay? So you guys, if you're home with kids, it's okay. And you really can still have some alone time, especially if you're used to having that a lot while your kids are at school. I would think that if you're used to having a lot of alone time while your kids are gone, this must feel like a little bit of a, refreshing right to you to hear me say you really can still do it even with kids you just have to you just have to be a little bit um, more intentional and you got to be proactive but it's not hard it's not hard to do it all hugely valuable all right so you guys you can do this it's possible all right i'll see you tomorrow